drop. SEPQ's Institute for Financial Wellbeing offers free private group classes throughout the year. To coordinate a private session, please visit the website on your screen or email financialwellbeing at sefq.com.
Good morning and welcome to the many students, teachers, and principals joining us today. More than 1,000 of you have come together at this very moment to hear about the adventures of Cubby and Coco, a bear and a bunny traveling throughout Albany, the capital of New York State. My name is Michael Castellana. I am the president and CEO of CEFQ. You might be asking, what, what is a CEFQ? CEFQ is a credit union similar to a bank, but just cooler. Not only do we keep your money safe and provide loans for things like cars and houses, but we also give money to those in need to make our community stronger. Maybe an adult in your life has taken you to a credit union or bank before. It's my job to make sure that the credit union is the best and safest place for you to store your money and for us to make sure that we change lives every day by helping those in need. I'm so happy you chose to be with us for this special event. Our team of SFQ teachers is ready to tell you all about Cubby and Coco, a lesson in sharing, friendship, and positivity. We will be counting money today too, so raise your hand if you like money, because I know I do. The best part of today is the book you have in your hands. No one has been given this book before. You are the very first to have a copy of The Adventures of Cubby and Coco, and that makes this a truly special occasion. My thanks to the SEFQ Institute for making all of this possible. Now sit back and enjoy The Adventures of Cubby and Coco. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to all of our students and classrooms who are joining us today for the adventures of Cubby and Coco. I'm so excited that you're here today. My name is Megan Johnson, and I am one of the educators with SEFQ's Institute for Financial Wellbeing, which is a fancy way of saying I get to talk with people all day about money and learning about financial decisions a very exciting thing I get to do. So I'm excited that you're here today for this special lesson because it's the very first time anybody has a copy of this book, The Adventures of Cubby and Coco, and it's the very first time anybody gets to enjoy this lesson. So we're gonna have a lot of fun today, a lot of discussion, and we're gonna get to see what our friends Cubby and Coco are up to today. There's gonna be lots of fun. So one of the things that I want to make you aware of today is that we will have um, a way to get to know what's going on in your classroom. So I know there's gonna be lots of conversation going on in the classroom. There's gonna be lots of great ideas, lots of thoughts going on. And your teachers, um, if they're able to, can use our chat to let us know some of the really awesome things that your students are thinking there in the classroom. So if you use the chat, you can say, hey, our students said this, or our students uh, answered this question, or they shared this. And anything that you put in that chat is only going to go to our CEFQ crew here. So it doesn't go to all of the classrooms who are on, just again to that CEFQ crew. So we get very excited when we get to hear what your students are thinking and feeling and, and sharing in the classroom. So we are uh, very excited to hear that um, whenever you're able. So I know we're going to have lots of discussion today, lots of great conversation about this adventure. And um, with that, I kind of want to introduce you officially to our facilitator for today's session. Her name is Cheryl Moore. And I know she's got a lot she wants to share with you. And I know she's so excited about sharing her friends Cubby and Coco with you today. So welcome, Cheryl. Thank you, Megan. Good morning, everybody. I am so excited to be here with you today. My name is Cheryl Moore, and my job at CEFQ is called an instructional design leader. What that means is I just get to create learning experiences like this one alongside the team of educators here at the CEFQ Institute for Financial Wellbeing. So, <laughs> excuse me. So you heard Michael mention that uh, we're a credit union. It's like a bank. And uh, what's really cool about our about CEFQ and our jobs at 
uh, CEFQ is that we get to not only, um, so CEFQ helps you store your money safely and, and many other things, but we as a team here, we get to help others learn more about money. And that's really a lot of fun. So today we're going to have the help of Cubby and Coco to learn more about money. They are the main characters of our story and they're gonna help us with a lot of really great things. So I am so excited that you all are our first readers of this learning experience. And there are over a thousand people registered for this class today. And then tomorrow we'll be doing it with another age group. And we're so, so thrilled that you found time today to join us. So um, let's start with uh, learning a little bit about what our goals are for today. So Cubby and Co the adventures of Cubby and Coco Building for Positive Change. What we're going to do today is spend a little bit of time on some math and money together. And, you know, I mean, if you've ever had money, maybe you've counted it before. So that's math, right? We're going to also talk about the reasons why we might want to set goals. And I'm sure you've achieved many goals already throughout this uh, school year and even in other areas of your life. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. You'll find that our friends Cubby and Coco set a goal. We'll talk about the difference between needs and wants. And I imagine that you have already had those discussions, but it's always a good one to keep having. And we're also going to talk about the importance of sharing and caring for one another. We'll also see ways that money can be earned in our story and used for spending, saving, and sharing or giving. And you're also going to experience how to practice, and you'll watch our friends Cubby and Coco make financial decisions. And if you're not sure about that word, do not worry. We're going to explain it momentarily. So needs and wants, I know you've, like I said, you've had this conversation. This is, um, you know, the needs are the things that we must have to survive. When we think about uh, human beings and other living things, we look at our basic needs. So things like food and water and um, a place to live and air and all those kinds of things. And um, this is really important because we want to make sure that we keep ourselves safe and healthy. Now, when, why are we talking about needs when we're talking about money? Well, we only have the money that we have, right? So when we are using our money, it's important that we focus on taking good care of ourselves by satisfying or taking care of those needs first. Now, that's not to say that we can't also have a little bit of fun with our wants. And so if we're using a budget, next word on the list, that's our plan and that's actually, we write down this plan for how we're going to spend and save our money. So if we use our money carefully by following this budget, what a great word to take home today, then we are uh, going to do a pretty good job, hopefully, of taking care of our needs and also our wants. All right. Now I mentioned to you a moment ago about financial decision. So that's really easy. This is a great way to think about this. Financial, have you heard this word before? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Financial is just about money. And decision, have you heard that word before? I like that word. That's like a real serious way to say, I'm making a choice, right? So money, choice, money, money choices. So financial decisions are just choices that we make with our money. And you're going to see how Cubby and Coco spend some pretty important time together planning out their financial decisions. Now, if we're talking about money and using our money well and taking good care of ourselves, we would be, um, you know, we would be missing out if we didn't talk about emergency fund. And an emergency fund, have you heard about this before? Yeah, okay, okay. Well, an emergency fund is that money that we set aside to take care of our needs when unexpected things happen. Usually some kind of money comes into play. If I get hurt 
or if I get sick or some other kind of thing happens, we usually need some extra money. And then we weren't planning for it. So it's kind of hard to have that as part of our budget with our needs and wants. So it's separate money. And then I know that we've talked about goals. You've talked about goals in school, I'm sure, or at home. And so these are the things that we want to achieve in the future. And what you'll soon learn is that Cubby and Coco certainly have some goals that they set. So Megan, I'm curious, you know, are you getting any questions or thoughts in the chat from our um, learners? Anything that we want to talk about before we move forward? You know, I think that we've heard that this idea of financial decision is a new concept for some. And um, I think we're just soaking in some of our vocab lessons today. I wonder about um, that word budget, if we've heard that before, if we know about budgets at home, or if um, we know of our uh, folks in our household using something like that, using a plan like that. Yeah, right. Now, again, I wanna stress, these are all really important things when we're learning about money and we will see all of these things happening with our friends, Cubby and Coco. So I wanted to make sure that we had some of this uh, discussion ahead of time. So, all right, well, thanks. Well, hey, that's great. I think we're ready to move on with one more uh, concept that we want to think about before we get started. What are these guys? Are these rocks what are these no there are coins right so i want to we're going to test now not test but we're going to check out your knowledge about coins so i know that uh, different uh, ages have learned about different ways these in different ways so let's see if we can identify each of these coins so what i'm going to do is i'm going to start right here i'm going to click on it it's going to go over to our friend here mr squirrel and this is the What's the name of this one? It's the quarter. How much is the quarter worth? Yep, 25 cents, 25 cents. Now I have another question for you. How many quarters can you put in a dollar or do you need for a dollar? One, two, three, four, five. No, four, four <laughs> quarters for a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> you like that one, eh, Megan? Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, here's another one. This one looks a lot like the quarter. I kind of think they're pretty close in size. Um, but this is our nickel. How much is our nickel worth? Yeah. Five cents, five cents to make a nickel. Speaking of cents, we know this guy, right? This one is the penny and we have five of those in the nickel. Well done. One cent each. How many pennies in a dollar? It's a lot of them. Yeah, a hundred, a hundred pennies for a dollar. I love that. That's super fun. Has anybody ever had a hundred pennies and you stack them up and you like make them, used to make them little piles of 10 as a kid. And then I would make a dollar. All right. What about this one? What's this one left? Think about, we had penny, nickel, quarter. This one is the, yeah, the dime. The dime is also one of my favorite coins. Yeah, I know. I have favorite coins. I do. Quarters and dimes, best ones. Uh, the dime is worth how much? Yeah, 10 cents, 10 cents. How many dimes do we put in a dollar? 10, that's why it's so cool, right? That's pretty fun. All right, now what's this going on over here? I'm, I'm gonna need some help in the chat. Megan, what is the this deal? This one's my favorite, Cheryl. This looks like buried treasure, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one is, any chatters in there? Our friends on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, we had an answer come in. Oh, just as you shared it. Dollar. It's a dollar. This yeah. is such a cool coin. It's gold. I mean, golden, right? Uh, it's a dollar. I love that you can just be like, here's a dollar, right? Nice job. Well, we're going to see all these coins show up in our story. So I want to keep your eyes open for more coins as we move on. All right. I think it's time that we read The Adventures of Cubby and Coco, Building for Positive Change. Now, what is that title all about? Building for Positive Change. Are we talking about the coins here? I mean, you know, we were just talking about coins, now we're talking about change. No, we're talking about helping each other, sharing with each other, caring with each other. And I can't wait for you to see how Cubby and Coco do just that. I also want to have you pay attention to our setting. So where do you think our characters are? 
please put that in the chat. Who are the characters? Which one do you think is Cubby? Which one's Coco? You decide, I'm gonna tell you in a minute, but you decide right now, which one do you think is Cubby and which one's Coco? I'll give you a hint. It's the bunny and the bear, but which is which? We don't know. And one of our classrooms, Cheryl said, I think they're at the park. Yes, absolutely. They're at the park. Does anybody, they're at a specific park. You'll see that a little bit later. Um, but I'm going to hopefully uh, share that with you in a second here. And while I see our classrooms chatting in and you're um, getting our story ready, Cheryl, I want to remind our um, classrooms on Zoom that we can chat in at any time. So if you have some great thoughts in the classroom, share it at any time. And I will let Cheryl know when we have some great thoughts. Okay. So um, let me just set this up here, Megan. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we're looking good. Are you seeing my story? Yes, I am. Okie dokie. So this is the adventures. Actually, let me back up to our cover page here. This is the adventures of Cubby and Coco. It is written by Beth Coco and Jesse Naramanoff. And it is illustrated by Jesse Naramanoff and edited by Nicole Stein. All of these um, folks who participated in the creation of this book worked at CEFQ at the time. So this is amazing. So proud of my colleagues. All right, well, here we go. We're ready to read our story, settle in, get comfy. If you happen to have the book with you, you can follow along. If you don't, no worry, follow along with me right here on the screen. Cubby the bear, sits on his front steps in Albany, New York. He closes his eyes, feeling the warmth of the summer sun on his face. The rich smells of flowers and fresh cut grass from the park fills the air. He listens to the soft rustle of the leaves as the wind dances through the trees. A faint metal squeak rises over the summer sounds. Cubby opens his eyes and sees Coco walking up to him pulling her red wagon. Good morning, Cubby, the little bunny says cheerily. Today is a perfect day for an adventure. Cubby beams at the sight of his friend. Coco's soft, fluffy ears are adorned with a bright yellow sunflower. Her joyful energy shines through her warm smile. He loves their adventures together. They always have fun. Standing up, he nods. Let's go. Cubby pulls Coco down the cobblestone street. As they reach the park, Cubby suddenly stops and tilts his head up. Do you hear that? Coco furls her little brow and twitches her ears, listening intently. A quiet chirping noise cuts through the city's sounds. Her eyes widen. It sounds like a bird. She crouches down next to a bush. I think it's coming from over here. A little robin hops out. Cubby and Coco step back. They look up, they look down. They look at each other. Where did he come from? Cubby asked aloud. Where is his nest? Now let's ask, I'm gonna stop for just a second. What is a nest? Why is a nest important to a bird? What do we know about a nest? Share that in the chat. Very good question, Cheryl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, and right. we have a classroom saying a nest is a bird's home. Yeah, it's their home, right? It's where they their babies are born, the babies grow up there. Oh, okay. So we've got a bird without a nest. What happens next? The robin chirps again, hopping around their feet. The little bird points to a clump of sticks and twigs on the edge of the street. Oh no, little robin, what happened to your home? Coco asked. The robin flaps her wings rapidly, creating a light breeze. Then he bends down using his beak to write the word wind. Oh, Cubby says, understanding. Did that windstorm yesterday knock down your nest? The robin nods and hops off in search of worms. Oh, how awful, Cubby says sadly. He thinks of his cozy little apartment with its warm bed and bright sunny kitchen. 
what if we build the new home for the robin? Coco squeals, bouncing up and down. Yes, we can build them a strong home, a wooden birdhouse. What an exciting adventure we have found for today. What do we need to build a birdhouse? Cubby puts his paw to his chin, thinking hard. Well, we need wood. Wood, Coco exclaims excitedly, still bouncing. And nails, nails, she bounces higher. And tools, a hammer, and a little saw will do the job. What about paint, Coco asks, bouncing still. Lots of bright colors. And paint, Cubby agrees. Coco stops bouncing. Where can we find all these things to make a birdhouse? <laughs> I know, Cubby says proudly, the hardware store. <gasps> Great, let's go. Wait, P Cubby puts up his paw. We need money to buy these things from the hardware store. <laughs> I have money, Coco reaches into her coin purse. I earned this from my lemonade stand last week. How much do we need? Cubby thinks, counting in his head. Mm -hmm. I think we'll need... Uh, uh, $20. Here, Cubby reaches into his chest pocket. How much money do we have all together? So Cubby has $7 in his paw. Coco has $5. How much does that make, my friends? Let us know in the chat. Seven plus five, they're putting their money together. See if our answers come in. And I know, Cheryl, some of our friends are joining us on YouTube, so they can't chat in with us, but you can still give us a little wave in your classroom or <laughs> shout out the answer right in there. Oh, and we have some classroom sh uh, chatting in now saying $12. Absolutely. $7 mm -hmm. and $5 equals $12. How much more do we need to make 20? Well, Cubby knows we need eight more dollars to make 20. Hmm, she thinks intently. How can we get eight more dollars? Sounds like a goal they might have to set. We can go diving for pennies, suggests Cubby, and hunting for dimes. They look beyond into the park. Coins glisten in the sunshine. Coco smiles. There is treasure everywhere. Do you see the coins? How many coins do you guys see in, us, on the, in the park? They're kind of hard to see. See if you can count them. They begin to hunt for money. Cubby stops and looks down at his furry paw. We found $6 together. We still need two more dollars to reach our goal. Cubby and Coco continue on their adventure in her little red wagon. Mr. Squirrel walks by, carrying his grocery bags. He staggers and one bag falls. Cubby stops and stands up. Mr. Squirrel, please let us help you with those bags. Oh, thank you, Cubby and Coco, Mr. Squirrel gasps gratefully. The two friends run over and ease the bags down into the wagon. They chat cheerily with the elderly squirrel along their walk and help him carry the bags into his home. I'm kind of curious, Megan, do you think anybody in our group recognizes the building and the park? That's a good Some question. Does anybody know? This is the place I really like to go. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm. As they turn to leave, Mr. Squirrel says, it was so kind of you two to stop and help me. Those bags were heavy. Please take this, you've earned it. He hands each of them one golden dollar coin. Cubby and Coco add the coins to their collection and count them all together. Cubby bounces around excitedly. Cubby, we, or Coco, excuse me. Coco bounces around excitedly. Cubby, we did it. We have enough money for the birdhouse. Oh, you guys, how do you feel about this? I'm so happy they earned their $20. They start walking down the street towards the hardware store. The mouth-watering scent of homemade waffle cones fills the air as they pass by the local ice cream shop. 
Mm, oh, wow. Coco stops, pressing her pink nose against the glass. Cubby shakes his head. Oh, no, we are not stopping. We have a goal. We have a birdhouse to build. He pulls her along. Coco glances back longingly at the bright, colorful tubs of ice cream. They reach the hardware store and look around. You were right, Cubby, says Coco. Look, they have everything we need. So we can see the saw and the hammer, and here's some wood over here, and uh, paint brushes, paints, a bunch of boxes of nails. And we add it all up, everything that they need on their list, which they've made right here. This looks a little bit like a, what's that word we learned earlier? Begins with B, ends in budget. Budget, yeah, it looks a little bit like a budget, right? $20, perfect, says Coco. Cubby is worried. Oh, actually, before I go on, I want to ask you, um, do you, do you all, have you all been to a hardware store before? Have you seen these things in the store? Would you know how to put them together to make a birdhouse? I don't know. Anybody build anything before? Love to know in the chat, share that in the chat. No, yes, Cubby. one of our classrooms said they've been to Home Depot and they've been to Lowe's. All right. Well, there you go. Those are like the mega hardware things. stores. Yeah. <laughs> I so kind of like that Robinson hardware. So maybe a little smaller hardware store. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's great. Yeah. I love the smell of wood. How many of you would like the smell of that fresh wood and lumber? Mm -hmm. Some people think it smells icky, but I like it. Yeah. And one of our <laughs> classrooms said some of us have built a bird house before. Get out of here. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, let's find out what Cubby and Coco do here at the hardware store. Cubby is worried. He doesn't think it is smart to spend all of the money that they have. What if they need something later? He shakes his head. Coco, I think we should save some of our money in case we have an emergency. Coco is confused. What do you mean? An emergency is something we haven't planned for, but might cost us extra money, the cub explains. He knows that having some money put aside is important. And in order to do that, they might have to choose to give something up. Cubby looks in the basket. I think we need to put some of the paint back. Now, I want to ask my friends out there, why do you think Cubby made the choice to put the paint back? I mean, what would you put back? Think about that. Mm -hmm. And let's find out what Cubby and Coco are going to do. Coco frowns, disappointed. But the paint will make the home beautiful for our little friend. Cubby sighs and nods. Yes, but we need to make choices. Let's see. What if we only buy three colors, red, yellow, and blue? Then we can save the money that is left over. Coco isn't convinced. Only three colors? These three colors are the primary colors, Cubby explained. With the primary colors, we can make all the rest. Watch, we can make green with yellow and blue, orange with yellow and red. And when we mix red and blue together, we get purple, exclaims Coco. Cubby, you are so smart. With three colors, we get the whole rainbow and save money. Let's get started. One of our classrooms said that they would leave the paint too because it's just for making the house pretty. We don't need it. Yeah, that's so I right. I like that they're thinking about their needs and their wants when they're making their birdhouse. Good thinking. It's excellent. And that's exactly what Cubby and Coco have to do. They're, they're giving a little something up that they want in order to make sure that they take care of their needs. And they've done an amazing job. They saved their money for an emergency and they stayed within their budget. They race home and get to work. Ow! Cubby cries, holding his paw. I cut myself and need a Band-Aid. Coco scampers off to the pharmacy and back. I guess it was a good thing we saved some money after all, she says as she bandages up her friend. Sharp tools can cause emergencies. They build and build and 
build. At last, they are finished. And as they stand back to admire their work, the little robin hops in and happily snuggles into his new home. Cubby and Coco high five, beaming with pride. Mr. Squirrel walks up and pauses. Oh my, what a lovely birdhouse, he exclaims. You two make a great team. Cubby and Coco grin, looking at each other. Say, my friend Mr. Cardinal is flying in to visit me from Buffalo next week, the old squirrel says. I would love to buy him a birdhouse to stay in so he feels at home. Do you think you could build one for me to buy? Cubby and Coco look at each other. They had enough nails, wood, and paint left over to make another birdhouse. And the money they, could, they earned could be used to buy more. Say, Cubby, Coco winks, could this become our next great adventure? Oh, so that, what did you think? Give Clap if you liked it. I know I can't hear you clapping, but clap if you liked it. Give us a note in the chat if you're with us on Zoom. Let us know what you thought about th that story. Uh, what are we thinking about this? You look at all those birdhouses. It looks so colorful and beautiful in the park. And look at all the extra birds that have come. I love this story. All right. Now, Megan, first of all, I want to know if we have anything that our friends have shared in the chat that we want to attend to. And then I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about some of the really important things that Cubby and Coco did and learned in the story. Right now, it looks like we have some folks who are just saying they really love the story, Cheryl. And I think we've just been really enjoying the adventure that Cubby and Coco went on today. Fair enough, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> let's take a second and, and recap and talk a little bit about some of the things then that, that took place. So uh, Cubby and Coco go out on their adventure, of course. Um, what did they use to get around? How did they get around the park? Yeah, they used Coco's wagon, right? And I think that's really great. That's super fun. Has anybody ever ridden in a little wagon? I remember as a kid somewhere along the way, I don't know why, but there was a wagon and it was fun to ride in that. Um, what special ways did they use the wagon? Does anybody remember? Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, they helped Mr. Squirrel. They put the groceries in. Uh, carry, uh, Co Coco got to ride around in it a little bit as we talked about. Nice job. And they carried their hardware material, uh, the materials from the hardware store too in the wagon. Yeah, imagine carrying all of that um, mm -hmm. in your hands from the hardware store. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that would work out so well. I mean, little bunny arms are short, right? Right. <laughs> and I don't know that Coco can walk on two legs. Now, who did they meet on their adventure? Do you remember this? Give you a hint. Yes, they met the robin. How did they know that the robin needed help? Yeah, they, they heard a sound, right? The robin was kind of crying out for help. And then they saw the, the sort of the broken nest and the pieces of the nest on the side of the street. So how did Cubby and Coco help the robin? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My mouse is a little bit wacky. I apologize. <laughs> yeah, they did. I mean, they built the birdhouse. Of course, they mm -hmm. built the birdhouse for the robin. Well done. Our friends are remembering another, um, another person that they met too, or animal that they met. Yes. Day, as well. Yes, they did. Absolutely. We're going to talk about that friend too in just a second. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm also wondering, um, I have a question about the birdhouse though. Why did they not just, or like, why did they choose to build a birdhouse specifically? What is it about the birdhouse? Like, why didn't they just build a nest? Good question. Yeah. We'll give folks a minute to answer that. I love that you all are chatting in. That's really great. Mm -hmm.
yeah, they, they um, built the, the birdhouse because it's stronger than the nest. Right? Yeah. Birdhouse has, um, you know, maybe not as fragile. It's um, in all using all the nails and everything with the wood. It's just stronger material, right? So it sounds like Cubby and Coco are good builders. Um, and then the robin's great at building a nest, but it's not quite the same, right? If you can have a birdhouse. Yeah. And our, one of our classrooms said the birdhouse can protect them more than the nest. Oh Which yeah, that's great. a really good idea too. Remember those basic needs we were talking about, right? To keep ourselves mm -hmm. safe and, and healthy and feeling good. Even though the birdhouse is more uh, protective, uh, somebody said a nest is hard to build. It is. I mean, especially if you're not a robin, right? Right. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> <laughs> now, I want to ask you about the good deeds. So I know you remembered Mr. Squirrel. So what did they do for Mr. Squirrel? Yeah, you can see there, right? Mr. Squirrel dropped their groceries and they needed some help. Imagine, has that ever happened to you where you're walking in the store? I've had like that bag rip open and it, everything just falls down on the ground. Oh, it feels so icky. What would have happened to Mr. Squirrel without their help? That's something I'd like to kind of think about because I think it's important that we do care for one another. I mean, they could have just kept walking and be like, well, squirrel figure it out, but that's not very nice. Right. And how would it make you feel for someone to ignore your problem when they could help out? And how does it make you feel when someone helps you? It's just, it just feels so great. Right. Has anybody ever been in that situation where they just needed a little bit of help, just a little bit of a human kindness and they got it. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I hope you found that. One of our classrooms said that um, the classmates do a great job of helping out when a friend drops their pencil case in class. Oh, that's so mm -hmm. nice to hear. Yeah. That's awesome. You guys, I don't even know. Well, look at this. This looks so much better than Mr. Squirrel's mm -hmm. poor situation there. Hey, Megan, did anybody know the picture of the uh, building? You know, I didn't get any guesses for that. So if you guys know, put it in the chat now. I know it's a place that I go see um, sometimes some performances mm -hmm. hint for you in the summer. Oh, one of our classrooms says, we don't know what this place is. Yeah. And if you're not in Albany, you may not, you probably right. don't know it. So we're just kind of curious about <laughs> who our audience is out right there mm -hmm. and what you know about what Albany. Well, we'll, we'll give you the, Megan, remind us, we'll, we'll give the answer later on. Yes. <laughs> So how did Cubby and Coco earn their money? So we know that they came to the story with some money, each of them from different uh, ways. Um, we know how one of them earned it. And one of them we didn't learn. So I remember from the story that um, some of the money was earned with a lemonade stand. That's right. And uh, we don't quite know the rest of it. However, they did earn a little bit of money in the story, kind of, right? Little finders, keepers. Where did that extra money come from? And how might you earn some money? Does anybody in our class classes out there earn money on their own? Good question. I mean, we might do it with... Um, doing our chores. Maybe you get a little bit of an allowance that way. Maybe you help um, out someone with some other things around the house, right? That's always good. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my daughter's friends just helped us out with some things around the house and we, we paid him uh, for his time. Grateful to, for that. So uh, Cubby and Coco found some coins in the park. And so that's kind of a finder's keepers thing. Um, we remembered, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, looking at, oh my gosh, Looking at uh, Cubby and Coco's paws here, if you're really good at counting fast, you might learn how who has the most money. But I think we can use estimating too and kind of guessing, knowing that these gold coins are a certain amount of money. How much are they? A dollar each, right? And we could count those up real quick and maybe guess that Cubby has more money. Do you remember how much money they found in the park? They Somebody found say six dollars. 
Yeah, six dollars and all those coins. I don't know if you saw all those the first time. Every time I look, I see a new number of coins. So uh, that's a fun little challenge there too. And you, if you do have that book with you, you can continue practicing that or enjoying that challenge mm -hmm. on your own. So let's talk about this situation. Did Cubby and Coco have to make a financial decision along the way? The answer is yes, they certainly did. This was a really tough decision too. A couple of things happened here that I think were really important. Um, so I'm going to give you a second to put some ideas in the chat, and then I'll share with you what I thought was kind of important about this situation. One thing that I thought was important was that um, Cubby was a really good friend with Coco. And the reason that I think Cubby was a really good friend with Coco and actually Mr. Robin was that Cubby helped Coco realize that they had to focus on their goal. They had to stay true to what they were setting out to do, which was to help their friend in need, the Robin. If they had stopped and taken some of that money for ice cream or used some of that money for ice cream, what would have happened when they reached the hardware store? Question. Yeah, I mean, we saw they had to put some of the paint back in order to, you know, kind of reach their goal and keep themselves secure. And so if they had spent money on ice cream, I don't think they would have been able to build the birdhouse. Uh, so that's really important that they, that they did that. And so Cubby was really focused um, stayed true. And then Coco, you know what? I think Coco was also a good friend to both Cubby and the Robin because Coco didn't argue. Coco was like, all right, I get it. We need to, we have to go keep going. All right. <laughs> I'll trade that off. I'll do without that for now because it's a want and I'll take care of that need and help my friend. So nice job there. I think Cheryl, you know, if we had, if they had stopped for the ice cream, that would have made their bellies feel good for like just a little while but that birdhouse that they built, that's a feeling that feels good for a long time too. So that's important too. I think that's a really important point that you make, Megan. So that, yeah, right. It's they, they did the right thing. I think with the money, it was a wise decision. It was a wise financial decision that helped um, not just themselves, uh, but helped someone else instead. Yeah. One of our classrooms said, not only did they have to choose this, but they had to make choices about their birdhouse materials. They sure did. Yeah. And I think they did a really great job. How creative, right? So just have this question here, you know, thinking to have yourselves think, think back, you, you can share if you want, but just think about that. Have you ever made your own financial decision? You know, I remember as a kid, we used to go camping and there was the candy store nearby and I would get a little bit of money to go to the candy store. And I had to choose because I only had what I had and I had to pick like the best candy, you know? Uh, and make sure that uh, I was able to choose the things that I wanted. That's what a luxury. <laughs> now I want to talk about the emergency that Cubby and Coco encountered. What happened to poor Cubby? Oh, Megan, I was recently building something with Habitat for Humanity and we were hammering in nails and, you know, you have to kind of like hold the nail at first to, you know, get it in there and you have to give it a good whack. I kept hitting my finger in the same oh. spot. I swear, actually I'm pushing on it now. It's actually still a little bit bruised. I smashed my finger in the same place like four or five times. And then I was like, okay, um, you need to maybe move that finger. <laughs> so I didn't need a bandaid, but it sure was bruised up. So what happened to Cubby? We had a classroom say he hurt his paw. Yeah, he hurt his paw. He cut himself with the tools. So Cubby and Coco um, were experienced enough with those tools to know how to use them. And it is important that you um, are careful when you're using tools, whether they're sharp or you're just giving something a good whack. <laughs> oh, now what would have happened? Um, well, I guess we kind of talked about that, right? We, we, if they had bought the ice cream, uh, not only would they have had problems at the hardware store, but they more likely would not have had money for Cubby's emergency. And what would have happened if they couldn't have fixed Cubby's paw? Do you think they could have finished the job? I don't know. They might not have been able to build the birdhouse, continue building. 
I'm glad Cuppy just had a small cut too. Me too. <laughs> uh, okay, now that reaches, those are all the thoughts that I really wanted to share with you. And I just love this page because I can see, it does remind me, I lived in Albany for a really long time. Uh, that Does anybody, did anybody put the name of the um, building in Megan? By mm -hmm. One of our classrooms said, is it the Park Playhouse? Yeah, that's the Washington Park Lake House and where we do the Park Playhouse. Excellent. And back here in the background, here are the buildings at the Capitol downtown. So this is just a great scene for me personally. I spent a lot of years in Albany. Maybe it's familiar for some of you. Maybe you've visited Albany and that looks a little bit familiar. So and what I love the most, though, is all the colorful birdhouses here in the park and the good that Cubby and Coco have done. So it's kind of like the Habitat for Humanity, right? But with uh, birds. <laughs> so um, what I'd like to know now before we do have a little bit of time to, for folks to kind of ask questions, uh, maybe share the things that you liked the most about the story. Uh, maybe our, some of our teachers out there would like to share mm -hmm. how maybe this, um, you know, we're, we're always interested to know how this fits with other things that you've been teaching this year or just other things that the students are learning about or experiencing in their own lives. And um, it would just be great to learn a little bit more about your experience today with the story. So I'm gonna take I this- I know, to, um, to add on that, some of our folks joined us on YouTube, which is fantastic, um, but they weren't able to chat in today. So if you wanna send us a message afterwards, we would love that too, just to hear about how your classroom enjoyed the story. That's Excellent. Well. Yeah. So I'd like to um, encourage all of you as you're thinking about what your favorite thing was, I'd like you to think about ways that you can help others in your community. As a young person, you, 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 you know, want to have the guidance of a trusted adult. Um, but even in school, you know, like the story with the pencil cases, mm -hmm. that's really great. So be kind with one another, look for opportunities where, you know, you can make a choice, um, not about money, but about how to treat each other and make a choice that would make you feel good if you were on the receiving end of that, right? So if you were the person who was being treated nicely, how good does that feel? And I promise you, it's going to feel good to help somebody else or just to be nice. It's so much easier and so much more fun to be nice than it is to be um, not nice. <laughs> so I hope that you can take that away. Um, think about your financial goals as you start to earn money, or maybe you're given gifts of money sometimes, whatever the case may be, whether you find money, be purposeful with that and put it toward good use that will be helpful for you or perhaps helpful for someone else. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, Megan, you can uh, please feel free to share anything that might be happening in the chat. But yeah. at this time, I'm going to thank you all for taking your time. Thank you to the teachers for joining us today. And we hope to um, do this story for you again next year or even over the summer as, uh, as you have the need to. So thanks again. Appreciate you being with us. And I wish you the fantastic rest of the day. Thank you, Cheryl. And thank you again to all of you. Just as a reminder to our teachers, you can always email us at financialwellbeing at sethq.com. Um, we're going to have a recording up on YouTube of this lesson uh, for the next 10 days. So if you want to take a look at it again, you are certainly welcome to do that. Um, so just send us a message and we can get you that link. Um, and also, if you have any other classrooms who want to watch this uh, lesson and watch that YouTube link, um, that's great too. You can let us know and we can um, send them books as well. Uh, so certainly we want to keep, uh, keep the lesson going. So if you'd like, um, just let us know. So have a great day, everybody. Thank you again so much for joining us and um, have a great summer coming up. Bye everybody.